Thank you. This is... Ah, uh, gee, I forgot my name. Uh, this is the first time I haven't walked out of the show one minute before. It's an unprecedented situation, but I quit. Uh, this is Oscar Levant, the irreligious Billy Graham of Los Angeles. And uh, I'm worn out, I can't think, talk, or breathe. And uh, what an irresistible combination of events. Uh, this is a momentous occasion for me, and I'm a little hysterical about it. And before I go on, I want to present my beautiful, lovely, and, uh, should I say, uh, boys, tolerant wife, Juno Land. <laughs> by George Bernard Shaw called Doctor's Dilemma, in which a character named Dubada uh, reminds some people of me, and you'll be happy to know that he dies in the third act. And before he dies, this is his last utterance. He says, I believe in Michelangelo, Velasquez, and Rembrandt. And these three great genius painters uh, is the simplest, unprepossessing way I can present my marvelous, historically, wonderful guest, the greatest song and dance man in history, a charming, an incomparably charming man, and a great, great, great artist, Fred Astaire. Thanks ever so much, Oscar. Thanks ever too much, you know? <laughs> I feel that it wasn't enough. No, 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 no. <laughs> Will you forgive me for one moment, uh, Miss Ethel Barrymore, an emissary, Herbert Byron Smoke Jr., who was listening in tonight. I was quite honored. She, I think, listens in. We paid her a minor tribute to Ted Hopper last week, and she asked if I would play a little buff for her tonight. And that's the only distraction we have. A little bop? Bop, bop. Oh, bop. Johann Sebastian Bop. <laughs> so I shall play. I didn't know what to play. I haven't had time to play bop. And my daughter, Lorna, suggested I play a little bit of the Italian concerto. You're a great fan of that, I believe. I am indeed. And you speak for a case of song. Well, you, you heard about me really just here, uh, searching for very much when you played uh, Chopin. So I had a happen with it. Well, she wants, but I'll play a little for the talk to Cheryl. <laughs> Well, we, I don't drink, but we have a bar. Oscar's bar and grill, exactly. 
The truth is, Channel 13 is a Trappist monastery in disguise. <laughs> the song that evoked the deepest memory for me was a song by George and Ira Gershwin uh, from a picture called, it's, I'm trying to refer to, you can't take that away from me. You talk about it, what is it? Oh, oh, uh, oh, yeah. Um, wait, wait a minute. Um, well, it was, it was uh, I never know what pictures these are. Oh, yeah. With Ginger. The ubiquitous Ginger. She was always with you for many years. Uh, Incidentally, was. it also was in a picture that I was in, uh, which starred Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers. Uh, camera, move in. It's my name, not Fred. Fred's is always a big name. Mine is always featured. Can you see it? Take an hour or so. Okay. okay. <laughs> The memory of all. No, no, they can't take that away from you. The way your smile just beams. The way you sing off The way you haunt my dreams. No, no, they can't. Meet again on the bumpy road to love. Still I'll always, always keep the memory of the way you hold your night, the way we dance till free, the way you change my life. Ring and the maid was 
didn't show up yesterday morning. Things broke around. I've had coffee in three days. And uh, Oscar was playing the piano. I heard downstairs, so I put my little band on, and I ran downstairs, and I opened the door, and there was Fred there, and he was singing, The Way You Wear Your Hat. Practicing. The way it was now. just on the doorstep. It was just so wonderful. Is that what you want me to say? And I said, don't look at me. <laughs> Anyway, that's what he, uh, they can't take that away from him. So you run my face. Uh, let's get on, uh, Fred. Uh, In that same show, the first show I saw was Lady Be Good. Did you see this? Lady Be Good? Uh, no. No, uh, my sister, Adele, did that. It was Walter Cabot. Walter Cabot sang it. He was a wonderful comedian. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can you recall the way he sang it? Well, he was the old, uh... Oh, sweet love. Oh, like that. Oh, sweet and lovely. Lady, you know, the pipes are bad enough. Now, that's not good. Now, the... Oh, sweet and lovely. Lady, you know. Oh, lady, you know. I am the only misunderstood. So, lady, you know. So, lady, you know. George Gershwin wrote, uh, Shall We Dance? 
and then went to stress with John Fontaine. And there was one other store after he died, which was the Goldwyn College, which Mr. Goldwyn produced. And in this show, in the picture, was the last song George Gershwin ever wrote, which was Our Love Is Here To Stay. And please, and I order you, try to do, not try, to put an imitation of Mr. Goldwyn in, in the event he sang the song. He doesn't sing it, you know, but imagine it. Well, well, well what, may I get this? You want me to, to, uh, to give an imitation of Sam singing that song? This marvelous, oh, Oscar. wonderful Sam. Oh, please, Sam, help me. <laughs> Wait a minute. So I, I don't know the words. I have it now. Sam knows I love him very much. And uh, I know Sam has a great sense of humor. Sam. Well, after all, oh, Sam. I wrote these lyrics because right. Mr. Sherry never has sung this song. I find it impossible to refuse anything Oscar asked me to do, so that's what her. Oh, man, man. It's all anyway. It's very clear. <laughs> Our love is here to stay, not for a year, but ever and a day. The radio and the telephone and the movies that we know may just be passing fancies and in time may go. But oh my dear, our love is here to stay. Huh? You know what I mean? <laughs> Together we're going a long, long way. I want to do good pictures, Oscar. In time, the Rockies may crumble. The Gibraltar may crumble. They're only made of clay. I think I'll have a role to do in my next picture. But our love is here. So call me and take a left so we can play some croquet after this, huh? If you don't want to play croquet, we can play some gin. No, well, we'll see. Anyway, in time, the Rockies may crumble. The Broadway may crumble. They're only made of clay, but... Our love is here to stay. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, you. you are a one. <laughs> Unfortunately, many of our audience doesn't know uh, the gregarious Sam Goldwyn because it's impossible to meet him. He lives uh, like an ex-king of Spain. Uh, we will now have Anderson, uh, uh, for headaches, toothaches, and anything that I create by my being on the show. It's a cure for anything I do. What time do we go on? Oh. Uh, on the way into the studio, I drove Mr. Stair down, and we walked in. The sole of my shoe uh, started to flop around and flap around, and uh, it was surgically removed. But this is a memento. I'm going to send this to Adlai Stevenson uh, for him when he runs in 1960, and uh, he needs all the help he can get. I hate to evoke sentimentality, but actually I like nothing better. But a, a wonderful friend and a great man, a friend of Mr. Stair Jr., my own, is going to celebrate, I think as the songwriter says, he's going to hit 73. You know who I'm talking about. Tell you, Irving, uh, Irving Berlin. Um, yes, his birthday is on the, on the 9th. Of May. May. Of May, yeah. He's going to hit 73 in Broadway. Yeah. And you're hitting, uh, I'm, I'm hitting Herald Square. No, Herald Square. <laughs> on, on the 10th. <laughs> the day following. No, I'm lying a little bit. We get up around Columbus Circle. Wow. I did right on the numbers. It is. It's been a 59 feet. That's fine. I'm going to explain that to a few people. So, listen to me. <laughs> Well, what street is it? The songwriter is in 59th Street. Yeah, when you're 59 years old, you're on 59th Street. <laughs> and Mr. Berlin will be on 70th Street. And uh, another birthday is May 6th. Uh, Tchaikovsky, uh, my mother made me crazy with her love of Tchaikovsky. And uh, fortunately, no, ah, it's enough about Tchaikovsky. Uh, Jill uh, and Fred, on am of Mr. Berlin. I want to ask Fred to do a song. I don't think it was a big hit. It changed part of the dance, was it? Well, I think it was played a lot. It was, it was always a, a favorite of mine. I, I, my favorite lyric. 
Do you like it? Oh, yeah. I mean, the whole tune and everything about it. I like very much. What picture? Oh, dear. Carefully, though. Carefully, that's right. Joe, uh, step before the door. The Berlin's were, are very good friends of ours. Just talk about the picture, Mr. Berlin. A little. Well, uh, Oscar had known the Berlin's for many years, and uh, when we got married, they were terribly sweet to me. And Ellen... Unlike me, doesn't it? Well, uh, no, but come, going to New York to live, and uh, Ellen Berlin is really a, a wonderful woman. She's very intelligent and writes extremely well, and I had enormous admiration and respect for her. And she used to give me a lot of advice, which I took because um, uh, it was very good. And uh, they had three daughters, and... Uh, Still have, I'm glad to That's right. And uh, she did say, I remember when we first met, she said to me, now, June, she said, Irving and Oscar should only have daughters. After all, they're not mechanical-minded, and they don't like to make little airplanes and, and kick footballs around, and it's very good for them to have daughters. And uh, so I took advice, and we had three daughters. And um, as a matter of fact, Irving was to, to be helpful, too, because he'd always uh, suggest names for the girls when they were born, and it always seemed to be that the names of his own daughters that he'd suggest. And it was sort of a coincidence that our oldest daughter, their daughters are named uh, Mary Ellen, Linda, and Elizabeth. And uh, by coincidence, really, our oldest daughter is named Marcia, and our middle daughter is named Lorna. But by the time we had the third one, I was wildly independent, and I named her Amanda, which had nothing to do with... Nancy anyway. and June wanted to name all three Amanda, and I was in favor of the name, and I said before Amanda, who's a wonderful little girl, before she was born, I said, even if it's a boy, you can call him Amanda. I was <laughs> no yes, but, but the doctor said to me, when I, uh, when I got a girl, he said, well, you didn't get the boy, but you got Amanda. Amanda said, my daughters, I wouldn't trade for all the boys, although they would, but... I mean, they should like boys. I don't have to, uh, uh, let's do, uh... There I go again, the trumpet's low! Must you dance? Every dance with the same fortunate man. Can't you see? You've danced so much more better. But you dance every dance with the same fortunate man. You have danced with him since the music began. Won't you change partners and dance with me? But you dance white and Touching his face, can't you see? I'm longing to be in this place. Won't you change partners and dance with me? And if the fifth is one out, and while you are alone, I'll tell the waiter to tell him he's wanted all the jealous songs. In his arms, ever since heaven knows when, won't you change partners and then you may never want to change partners again. I'd, I'd do anything for you, but 
I swear, you know, old dad, whenever a dance routine comes up, he begins to fume and fret and worry, and I just don't want to look too bad. I'd do anything for you but that, you know? Well, I'm going to press on, because at this moment, what's the use of kidding? The whole world is waiting for this moment for you to dance, oh. and the whole world, as far as this station is concerned, goes as far as Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that we're going to be recognized as the 49th day someday? Uh, anyway, please, please, dance. And I'm going on my broken, sore ligament knees to beg you. I won't dance. Don't ask me. I won't dance. Don't ask me. I won't dance. I'm the world. Oh, okay. I mean, uh, you know, this, this is, this is a, a lyric about a girl, or oh, I think two. Girl, a little girl named Ginger, and uh, I better start over again. You know, I was in a picture with you on Ginger, as I mentioned before, Barkley. Yeah. And you know, during that picture, the music. Barkley? Barkley's a, 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 on Broadway. Barkley. Huh? The Barkley's on Broadway. You're the first man who ever dared correctly in public. <laughs> <laughs> I had a hard time getting it out. <laughs> but at any rate, if you remember, Ginger had this maternal compulsion, which I've never had this, uh, where she brushes the sick brushes and stands off the only relic of middle age I have, uh, and other uh, things uh, that seem to accumulate on my clothes. And it annoyed me, and I once put the arm away. Uh, did she ever do that to you? What? You mean brush? Oh, yeah, I, I always had a lot of dandruff, you know, and she... Uh, She's you are for those Daniel days. I don't, I don't <laughs> shut you off. I, I run the back and clean it over you. While we're on the subject of you and Ginger, may I stand, uh, Mr. Flanagan, head of Channel Fiction? I want to relax. Uh, you know, the series of pictures you did with Ginger at Arkeo are really have become a historical series. As a matter of fact, they're playing every museum in the world right now. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and uh, I would be very curious to know your opinion uh, of your favorite picture of that wonderful series. Well, my, my favorite, uh, I'm hard to figure out favorites, you know. Each one that we, we did, I always thought might have been the best one. I didn't know, but uh, looking back on it, I think maybe I like Top Hat. That's it might be the favorite. Of By Irving Berlin. Oh, yeah. Uh, my favorite was Irene and Vernon Castle, the story of. Well, I, I, I must say I like that one, too. That was more serious story than uh, anything we, we did. What was your favorite, Joan? My favorite? Uh, well, oh, actually, favorite. I, I love all the their pictures, but I think I'm slightly prejudiced. I, I preferred the Barclays of Broadway because you were it. <laughs> 